family, peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Lighten coming back again with some more spiritual diddles. And today I'm going in on who can I place on the altar? This is a good one, family. This one, this one's a good one. Because a lot of people aren't sure who to place on their altar or who can go on the altar. I'm here to tell you, family, anyone you choose. Anyone you choose. Preferably blood relatives in the beginning. In the beginning, blood relatives. I would prefer you to get a connection with your ancestors. That way, if you put anyone on your altar that isn't in your favor, they can handle it for you. They can handle it for you. But most of the, most of the time, you know who you want to put on your altar or who you got a connection with. Me personally, I put my ancestors. I put close friends of the family who transitioned. I put wealthy people. I put anyone that's going to do me good in this reality. First off, ancestors. Let's say you have an ancestor that's living and you're not getting along that well. Put a picture of them on their altar, on your altar, and watch the relationship change. For some reason, they're either not going to say anything negative to you or they're just going to be compelled to say nothing to you. Because once you serve someone's higher self, their higher self will give their lower self, their earthly self, messages. It just goes like that. I've had an issue with someone in my close family. I put them on my altar. The next time I seen them, it was all peace, love, and light. I was like, man, I just put them on my altar a month ago. Now they're loving me again? I've done this a myriad of times with people in my family, and I watched the relationship change. That's one of my altar hacks. If I have an issue with someone, or more than likely they have an issue with me, I throw them on my altar, and I watch the relationship change. I talk to their higher self. I wish them well. I don't wish them any ill will. Regardless of how they're treating me, they're treating me from their level of understanding. They don't know I'm a God. They don't know I'm a light being. They don't know that they are a God. And one thing that I do, I treat everyone like a God whether they know they're a God or not. There are a lot of women out here doing scallywaggish things. I call them misguided queens because they're not aware of what they're doing. I don't call them out of their name or anything like that. I treat everyone on the, with the utmost respect. I treat everyone like they're a god. That's just what I do. If you're not receptive to what I'm giving you, I don't give you anything. I fade away like a ghost. I just fade away. You just won't hear from me anymore. I won't talk bad about you or anything. Because I understand a lot of people operate and function on their level of understanding. And if you're understanding here and they're understanding there, and you're trying to get them to come here and they're fighting for their limitations, what are you fighting for? You're already winning. You're already winning. Second thing, close friends of the family. I've had a lot of family members that aren't blood relatives, but they're close friends of the family that have transitioned. I put them on my altar because more than likely there's no one in their family that has an altar up that's doing what they need to be doing for them. And that's what I do. I put them on my altar. I burn ancestor money. I give them offerings. You know what I mean? I make sure they win. When you become the ambassador of your family, after you set your altar up, your ancestors on the other side more than likely know that you're the only one doing it in your family. They're going to make sure you're good. I had a, a challenging financial situation. Should have taken me 10 days. It took me two. It took me two to recoup what was needed. Everything was pointing to 10 days. Everyone I talked to, 10 days. Two days it came. Because my ancestors knew I needed it, I gave thanks. And I was saying divine prayers like crazy. I normally only say 21 animal coins a day, but I had been saying them for like 15 minutes, off and on, intermittently throughout the day. Just giving thanks, giving praises, and giving thanks for in advance for the thing that I knew was coming. When you create a no system about yourself, your reality bends to your level of understanding. When you know things are going to happen, they will. Don't doubt it. Just know. Yeah, I know it's going to happen. And be kind of arrogant. Yeah, it's going to happen. I already know. Well, how you know? I don't need to know. I just know. You know, a lot of things that you know, you can't really explain. You can't explain what you know. It's more of an innate feeling. Rich people, wealthy people can also go on your altar. Um, my spiritual master, Dr. Milton Gibson, implored us all to put someone wealthy on our altar that we resonated with. I put Carnegie on my altar. 
You know what I'm saying? Because he was a wealthy philanthropist. I put him on my altar. Next thing you know, I'm up in Carnegie Hall balling, having a great time in New York, living in the Carnegie Hotel for a week. You know what I mean? I was winning because I tethered my consciousness up with him. And when you put someone wealthy on your altar, you treat them as such. You know what I mean? I put them on my altar. I give them their own separate little offering. I wish them well, and I speak to them as if they're my ancestors. I give thanks for allowing them to allow me to tether my consciousness with theirs. And I notice the current of the current of financial wealth start flowing in my way. It just started to sway in my way. So that's another thing you can put on your another people, other people you can put on your altar. Wealthy people, you can put someone on altar that you revere real well, someone that you look up to, you know. I got my, my, my spiritual master, Dr. Mitchell Gibson, and his wife on my altar. Anyone that I revere, anyone that I look up to, I put on my altar. Because I want to show their higher self that I'm looking out for them as well. You can put yourself on your altar. That's one thing a lot of people forget. They take care of everyone else in their bloodline, but they forget about themselves. Put a picture of yourself on your altar. Because there's three aspects of yourself that's existing simultaneously while you're here on earth. There's your earthly self, your human self, there's your higher self, and then there's your lower self. I give thanks to my higher self for guiding me and imploring me and making sure I make great decisions. And I give thanks to my, my lower self and I wish my lower self well. I wish my lower self wherever that, that portion of my essence is to know that they're a guy and to raise up from that area. You know, a lot of people go through crucibles on earth because, well, well, let me explain what a crucible is. A crucible is nothing more than an extreme challenging time in your life. It usually happens in your 20s. If you haven't learned, your 30s too. If you haven't learned, your 40s. There's no time frame of when and, when and where a crucible can occur. But normally a crucible occurs when your lower self makes a pact with your earthly self to to go through extreme challenges to shorten their suffering. Your lower self can be suffering in a lower place for 20 years, but that lower self can make a pact with your higher self to suffer for two or three years to shorten their time wherever they're suffering. And you'll agree to it, and all of a sudden you notice things are just not going your way. Crucibles may seem like a bad thing from an earthly perspective, but in the grand scheme of things on a spiritual level, they're a great thing because you're easing your suffering on a lower level. One thing that people don't realize is this. When you're in a place like hell, Hades, wherever you are, that's a lower vibratory place that you choose to go to after you transition because you feel as if you've done a lot of bad things. Whenever you're there, your prayers will only go so far. Your prayers will only go as far as the earthly realm. So there are aspects of yourself praying to you right now, like we play, pray to heaven and angels and things like that. That's as far as your prayer can go when you're in a lower vibratory place like that. So when you start getting a feeling like you should start doing something better, you should start helping yourself out, do it. Wherever you are, whether you have an altar or not, start giving thanks for whatever place your lower self is to make it come up. When your lower self rises, your earthly self rises. It's just that simple, family. So I want to let you know, family, you can put anyone on your altar that you choose. Again, your altar is nothing more than a physical representation of your spirituality. There's no right, there's no wrong. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's no lefts. You can do whatever you choose on your altar. It's your altar. Whatever your spiritual prowess is, whatever your spiritual level is, that's what you do. But just be consistent with it. That's where the magic with the altar comes in at. Being consistent. There are some people that are intermittently practicing at their altar. When you intermittently practice on your altar, you get intermittent results. But when you're consistent, you get consistent results in your earthly reality. I have no problems. I have no bad news. I have nothing but wins. Win after win after win. Okay, family? So, peace and love, family. I hope you really received the message that I was just explaining to you about the altar. And forget what everyone else is saying. Forget what everyone else is telling you. Go with what you feel. If what I'm saying isn't resonating with you, it's all good. 
It's all good. But what I'm saying to you is what works for me and works for other members of my spiritual dream team. Stop trying to recreate the wheel, family. Take from other people that what's working and implement it in your life. I use the Jeet Kune Do method to my spirituality. I take from that source. I take from that source. I take from that source. Are you winning with that? Let me get a little bit of that. And I try it. I give it 30 days. After 30 days, if I don't see any results, if it's not working for me, I discard it. And I never look back. I never look back. What works for me may not work for you. Find out what works for you. And when you start winning, when you start finding results and getting results, share with the world. I believe personally that it's everyone's, every sentient being that's living, anyone with consciousness that can think and make a choice, I think it's all our duty to raise the vibration of this planet. Not to decrease it. Not to decrease it. When you raise the vibration of anything, it runs smoothly. The planet is in turmoil right now because there aren't enough, enough people vibrating high. A lot of people still embrace negativity. They see negativity everywhere. But I want to let you know one last thing before I go. If there's 50% negative, there's 50% positive. Focus on the light. The darkness will be there. That doesn't mean that it's bad, but it's there. Focus on the light. You be the master of your universe and usurp your divine will to win. And on that note, family, peace and love. I can be reached every Monday night on my hit radio show, Twin Flame Radio, with my lovely wife, Divine Queen. You can call in and speak to the God live, 619-924-0835. And on that note, family, winning! <laughs>